Hey, so today we're gonna to be talking about how to set up your AR-15 for home defense. This is a follow-up video uh, to a video I recently did uh, about choosing a weapon for home defense uh, in which I say that I prefer the AR-15. So I'll link that video up, I don't know, somewhere, maybe up here. Um, so you could watch that if you haven't. Uh, if you have already, you've been waiting for this video, this is it. This is just gonna be some personal opinions about how I set up my AR-15. Also, just a quick update for my subscribers or regulars. Uh, if I have regulars, I'm not sure if I do, but I haven't put a video out in like a month. I've just been busy. So I've been wanting to get LASIK for a long time, uh, and I finally just did uh, a few weeks back. So I got actually PRK, not quite the same as LASIK, a little more recovery time. So I got that, so I had to recover for that for a little bit. Uh, I have a full-time job. I make tons of holsters and sell them, which have been keeping me busy. I've been selling way more holsters than I was planning on. Uh, also put our house for sale and we're under contract now and we're also under contract for the purchase of a new home. So as you can imagine, last month of my life has been pretty busy. Um, but this is a video that I've been wanting to put out for a while. So hopefully you guys can learn something and this is, you know, just my personal opinion, my personal home defense setup. So not everything is the best of the best that it could possibly be, but it's what works for me. Thanks. All right, so you're gonna to wanna to start with an AR-15. Uh, what I have here is technically an AR-15 pistol, uh, and all that means is it's a short-barreled AR-15 that has either just a pistol buffer tube or a pistol brace of some sort on it. Um, so it can't have an actual stock. If you put an actual stock on a short-barreled AR-15, then you have a short-barreled rifle technically, uh, and you need to file that uh, and get your $200 tax stamp with the ATF. Uh, and I'm not gonna really go into that. Maybe I'll se make a separate video of like what the difference between a rifle, SBR, and uh, pistol are. But for now, this is a pistol because primarily it has a pistol brace and a shorter barrel. Uh, this has a suppressor on it actually, so let me take this off. Uh, if you wanna put a suppressor on your home defense gun, Awesome, go for it, but I know a lot of people aren't gonna go that route. Maybe I'll make a separate video about suppressors too. Um, but for now, I'll assume you're gonna wanna go with an AR-15, uh, whether you're gonna gonna go with a longer barrel or not, I'll get to in a second. So you have your AR-15 and I'll pair that with a set of electronic ear pro. Um, one of my commenters mentioned that they have mono, uh, but you're gonna want stereo electronic ear pro so you can hear left and right and direction and all that stuff. And what these will do is amplify the uh, quiet noises in your house, let you hear people creeping around in your house, uh, but also obviously block out loud noises, which your rifle or pistol or anything shot in your house is gonna be an extremely loud deafening noise. So I would keep these near your home defense gun too and toss them on and you'll kind of have some advantages. So AR-15 pistol, like I was saying, so this is a, set up with a pistol brace technically, uh, and the barrel is short. So the reason you're gonna want a shorter barrel uh, inside is just for maneuverability, uh, being able to point your gun, move around obstacles, all that stuff. Uh, can you do it with a longer barrel? Certainly you can, uh, no problem. But if you have the option to go for a shorter overall length of your gun, it makes it a little easier to handle, especially in uh, the confines of your house and hallways and bedrooms and that kind of stuff. So this is an 11.5 inch. Um, you can drop it down to a 10.5 inch, but most uh, 223 or 556 loses a lot of the effectiveness of the round. So it either won't fragment, it won't tumble, it won't expand or whatever once it goes below a certain feet per second. Um, the longer your barrel up to a certain point, the higher your feet per second of your bullet's gonna be. Um, so if you drop below a 10, 10 and a half inch barrel, you are no longer having the velocity in your bullet to make it perform like it's supposed to. So I would go with a 10.5 or 10.3 or longer. This is an 11.5. Um, and a 10.5 inch barrel is good out to like 75 yards or so before or 50. It depends, on the, it depends on the ammo you're using actually before it loses its effectiveness. So inside of your house, unless you have a freaking mansion, you're gonna be under 50 yards shooting. You're gonna be really close. Um, so shorter barrel I would recommend, um, and that's mostly just to be able to maneuver it in your house, uh, turn around in a hallway, that kind of stuff. Uh, you're gonna wanna put a weapon light on here. So this is a Surefire X300 uh, Ultra, and this actually has a diffuser on it, so it kind of makes the light of more flood instead of a uh, spot. 
Um, is it needed? Not really. Um, but I would keep one on your rifle for sure. You need a weapon mounted light on your rifle because you can really only operate this with two hands. Uh, so you don't have a separate hand for a handheld flashlight. So get a weapon light on your rifle. Next we'll be talking about sights. So if you want to use irons, that's cool. Uh, irons are great. I have backup irons on this gun. Uh, backup meaning they're not my primary uh, aiming source. Really that's going to be the red dot. Um, this is has a, a Trijicon MRO on it. I really like the MRO, uh, but aim points also amazing. But MRO has a little bit of bigger field of view so you can pick up on your target a little faster with the MRO than you could with the aim point. Theoretically, uh, probably not much faster in practice, but also something like an EOTech with a really big window uh, is great for close quarters and fast target acquisition. So I think red dots would be awesome. Are they necessary for a home defense rifle? Mm, I wouldn't say so, but you can get some some cheaper ones also cheaper than this. And this isn't even that these ones aren't even that expensive uh, and they'll be totally adequate. There's a lot of them out there, uh, and if you have backup irons, just in case you fail, you could even run your irons up all the time and still use your red dot. So if you're worried, if your red dot is really crappy and you're worried it might go out, and then run your irons up while you're doing it. And you kind of have the best of both worlds. The rear sight kind of gets in the way a little bit, but I oftentimes run my red dot uh, with the front sight up, or I have a rifle. Oh, I don't have it anymore. I had a rifle with a fixed um, front, front sight that you couldn't flip down. Um, and I like running it with the front sight. Kind of gives you some perspective and lets you pick up on your dot faster sometimes. Um, then everything else on the rifle is kind of preferential as far as what makes it better and what makes it worse. This has a uh, KMR rail, so it's a thin, lightweight rail, uh, easy to grip, uh, and a grip stop. Uh, there's a lot of other devices that I like also up here. Uh, BCM makes one, Magpul makes hand stop, a bunch of other companies make them out there. Um, so yeah, your trigger is kind of whatever. This has a CMC flat single stage. I really like single stage triggers for my AR-15s. And this one also has a SIG, oh, what is it, SBX pistol brace, uh, and it has a sling on it. So pistol brace versus stock or whatever you're gonna set up, that's kind of preferential also, just whatever works for you, whatever's comfortable, whatever you can get a good cheek weld with. Um, big part about your stock is both, you know, going into your shoulder, obviously, but also your cheek. Uh, so how your cheek lines up on this and how that lines up with your optic, you're able to consistently reproduce uh, that lineup. Um, pistol grip, uh, you're usually gonna want a shorter overall length of your rifle. So if you have a stock, it's probably not gonna be way out here, but maybe it is, a lot of people like that. I, I have my stocks and you know my pistol brace a little closer. So I like uh, grips that are a little more vertical. This is the Umbrella Corporation. Magpul makes one that I have on this other AR that I'll show you in a second. The uh, MOE K2, I think. Um, and it's also a more vertical orientation grip and that's because your shoulder stock or pistol brace will be closer into your shoulder if you shoulder it. I don't shoulder this, not at all. Uh, but if you did or if you had a sh shoulder stock, your, sh your, sh your gun is closer to your body so the angle of your wrist instead of being all distorted like this, you can have it a little more natural. So um, a more vertical type pistol grip uh, is great. Uh, mags, you know, whatever's reliable in your gun. P mags are, you can't go wrong with P mags. There's a lot of them out there. There's a lot of other mags out there. I use pretty much primarily P mags. Uh, this is set up with a mag pod just because I like it for holding this video uh, or holding the rifle uh, horizontal for this video. But, you know, it's not really necessary for a home defense rifle, but I just kind of have most of my mags outfitted with them. Um, so P mags versus drum mags or whatever, whatever is reliable in your gun and gives you a fair amount of capacity. Uh, I use a mag coupler actually, so I'm just, I have this on here just because it keeps my gun more horizontal, but really I have it set up with a uh, mag coupler. So this puts two mags together, so if <laughs> I get into some crazy gunfight and go dry on 30 rounds, I just drop in, put this in, and have another 30 rounds on tap. Uh, I also have a vest that if given enough time, I would put it on and it has another mag or two uh, in it. And maybe I'll do a separate video about that. Um, but yeah, so you were gonna wanna mag. And I think that's pretty much it. 
Uh, oh, muzzle device. So if you don't have a suppressor um, and it's dark, your gun will emit a flash. Uh, so the explosion from your ammunition will be bright. So a flash hider will help indoors. Um, I probably wouldn't recommend a muzzle brake indoor because that's gonna be really concussive in the hallway or whatever if you have to shoot it. Um, so I might steer clear of brakes for your home defense rifle and I might use something like a linear compensator which directs the blast forward so you have something like the Noveski uh, KX3 or KX5. Uh, there's a few of them. I have a Levang linear compensator on my uh, car gun, my trunk, my trunk gun or some people call it a truck gun, trunk gun, whatever. Uh, maybe I'll link to that somewhere. Uh, and you can look at how that rifle's set up too. But yeah, I would recommend either flash hider or a linear compensator um, because a muzzle brake, the blast of it will be pretty extreme uh, in a hallway. Uh, and that's pretty much it for the AR-15 platform. Um, so I'm recommending a 223-556 for uh, home defense because it's an effective round. It's pretty low recoil. It's easy to manage. So you have a couple schools of thought for ammo. You have basically something like the tap, which is just lethal. This is kind of almost probably undisputed uh, best round for actually taking somebody down. Um, so the first school of thought is I want the most effective load. I don't care about drywall penetration or any of that stuff. I just want to take the bad guy down quick and effective. Uh, in which you might want to use something like the tap, I think the 75 grain. Uh, this is 223. I hear the 556 is a little more effective, maybe. I don't know. Maybe it has some more pressure. I haven't researched a super ton on the, on the tap round. I think it stands for Tactical Application Police. Um, somebody can correct me in the comments if that's not right. Um, but 75 grain, so typically what you have is a heavier, slower moving bullet will penetrate deeper into flesh, but also will penetrate more drywall. Um, so this is my load. This is my preferred load uh, for the 5.56. However, if you live in an apartment or you have kids or you have a lot of neighbors or something and you want to limit your drywall penetration, a lot of people go that route and they go for something like uh, a lighter bullet VMAX or AMAX, like a 40 to 55 grain. Um, so the lighter your bullet is, typically the faster it's gonna go, not always. Um, and the least it's gonna penetrate through drywall and uh, flesh or ballistics gel. So a lighter one, this, these are uh, 40 grain VMAX bullets. Um, these won't meet FBI standards for penetration. So that means you have a bigger dude, it may not get to his vitals, it, it'll expand and not go as deep as something like the 75 grain tap. However, it won't go through as much drywall. Um, schools of thought on that are kind of like, if it's gonna penetrate enough to do the damage you wanna do to a human body, it's gonna penetrate a lot of drywall. Uh, in my previous video, I mentioned that 556 or 223 penetrates less drywall than like slugs or buckshots or even handgun rounds like nine millimeter, 40, 45. Um, which is true for a lot of the loads. However, something like a 75 grain tap will probably penetrate more drywall than a nine millimeter or roughly the same. You get something like a 40 grain VMAX though, it won't penetrate as much drywall. Um, I actually got some ballistics gel uh, and am planning on doing a video in the coming weeks, months, I don't know, whenever I have some time with this exact setup. So if you're wondering about drywall and ballistics penetration for a setup like this with an 11 and a half inch barrel roughly uh, and some of these lows and stay tuned, uh, in the future I'll do that. Uh, another common, pretty popular load is XM193. I have a ton of this in bulk, it's a great round. Uh, it's 5.56 five, and it's good. It'll either tumble or fragment though. The consistency isn't something like the tap. Like there's a lot of tests on this and it's like, oh yeah, one in seven tumble and one in eight fragment and it's, it's kind of hit or miss. But 55 grain, this is a good load. If you have bulk, this is what I would go for. Um, if you don't want to off one of those other rounds, don't go for like a 62 grain green tip. Stay away from that stuff because it's not very effective. Um, and yeah, if you do shoot 5.56 five, or want to shoot 5.56, five, five, there is a slight difference between 5.56 five, and 2.23. Um, if you have a barrel chambered for 5.56, five, five, you can shoot 5.56 five, five, or 2.23. If it's chambered for 2.23, 
you just want to stick with 223 loads because 556 potentially has more pressure uh, and your barrel is not designed for that. So if given the opportunity, I would always opt for a 556 barrel. Um, and that's just in general. There's a lot of different chambers in between 223 wild and stuff like that. But 556 is what I'd go for. Speaking of 556, it's what my rifle is set up for, but I have another rifle that I would be totally happy with using for home defense, maybe even more. I may switch to it. Uh, and it's a 300 blackout and I get a lot of questions about that. So let's just get into it real quick. All right, so 300 black blackout, 300 blackout. This is a topic that I guess get asked about a lot. Oh, what about 300 blackout for home defense? 300 blackout would be great. Has some huge advantages over 5.56. Five, um, but bullets are more expensive, they're not as popular, all that stuff. But this is a 300 blackout setup. This is actually a suppressed setup. So this has a suppressor, this has a silencer coat Omega on it with an eight and a half inch barrel. And the overall length of this gun is still less than that of like a 14.5 inch rifle. So a really short package. Um, the main advantage of a 300 blackout, if you're talking about a defensive rifle and where you want to keep your overall package short is that you can go shorter with the barrels and keep the lethality and effectiveness of the round. Um, whereas 5.56, you don't want to really drop below 10 inches. Uh, 300 blackouts effective down to like seven inches. This is an eight and a half inch barrel, which is a great length. Um, 5.56 was originally designed for like an 18 or 20 inch barrel. Um, so your whole burn won't be achieved uh, of your powder until it's, you know, your barrel length is that long. So you're lowering the effectiveness of the round a lot by sh cutting the barrel shorter. Whereas the 300 Blackout was designed specifically for shorter barrels, so you get a full burn, I believe, in eight inches. Uh, what that means is you drop your barrel length for 300 Blackout and you still have what the round is made for. Um, having said that, a lot of your bulk 300 Blackout is really just a 308 round dropped into a 5.56 cartridge, so it's a slow moving 308 round. And a lot of those rounds are designed to be moving faster from a 308 cartridge. So a lot of 300 blackout rounds, your ch cheaper target stuff isn't gonna expand, your 220 grain Remington uh, isn't gonna expand or anything like that because really they're designed for 308 uh, velocities. They are making a lot of 300 blackout loads now specific to 300 blackout. Um, I don't have them on the table here, but Lehigh makes some, Barnes makes some, um, 300 blackout specific rounds which are designed to expand the lower velocities that we get from a 300 blackout. So if you're going to use a 300 blackout for home defense, get a true 300 blackout load that is designed to expand or fracture or whatever at 300 blackout speeds because a lot of the bullets are really just 308 bullets which don't perform like they're supposed to at slower velocities. So 300 blackout is essentially just the same as a 5.56 AR-15, you just change the barrel uh, and then the muzzle device obviously or else uh, you'll blow up your 5.56 muzzle device but it won't even screw into a 300 blackout barrel so you don't have to worry about that. So everything else is the same though, upper charging handle, buffer tube, buffer spring, everything is the same except for the barrel. So if you want to make a switch to 300 blackout and you have a bunch of ARs and 5.56 laying around, it's really easy to just swap the barrel onto it and boom, you have a 300 blackout. So my opinion on 300 blackout is great. I love it. I love 300 blackout, especially if you're talking about suppressed 300 blackouts. So is 300 blackout an option for home defense? Definitely. I wouldn't go for a subsonic round uh, unless it's, you know, a $3 around, $3 around bullet. Um, those Lehigh make some subsonic round, that's pretty good. But I'd go for a supersonic rounds, uh, like the 110 grain Barnes, uh, if you're gonna use it for home defense. You just want maximum damage out of your rifle and the supersonics do a lot more damage than the subsonics. Uh, if you're shooting subsonics out of your 300 blackout, you're basically just shooting a glorified 45. Um, and nothing's wrong with that, but if you could be shooting a more lethal round out of the same rifle, I would choose that. So I'd go for like the um, 110 grain Barnes bullet is, is the good one. I Having a brain fire, what it's specifically called, I'll, I'll put it down in the description or something. Um, so 300 blackout's great, uh, 5.56 is great, and 
yeah, stay tuned. In the next few weeks or couple months, I'll probably have some videos out where I'll be talking about, well, not talking about, I'll be talking about and showing uh, penetration of this rifle with these bullets that I just went over. And hopefully that's good. All right, there's a lot of rambling in this video, but I just wanted to get it out quick and get you some information out there. As always, if you have questions, uh, leave them down in the comments and I have a great knowledgeable subscription base and they'll be able to answer it or I will. I respond to most comments myself. Um, all right, thanks for watching and take care.